Hi, and welcome to an introduction to form building. In this video, we're going to be covering off the basics of the form builder and how we can add fields into the form and then publish it out to the users within minutes. So jumping straight into the portal, once you've logged in, select forms from the left hand side. In this view, you'll see a list of all of the forms you currently have on your account, which you can click on to open. But for now, let's click on the create form in the top right hand corner to start. Now we're in the form builder, you'll notice that we've structured the layout to be as simple as possible into these three columns. On the left hand side, there's an add field section. This lists all of the different types of fields that you can add into your form. In the middle, you've got the form layout, which is where we'll be creating our form fields and configuring them in a second. And then lastly, on the right hand side is settings. This is made up of general settings, web form settings and advanced settings, which we'll come back to a little later. Let's get started with adding some new fields into the form. You'll notice that these are broken up into various categories. There are layout fields for things such as headings, captions and separators, which we'll use to structure the form. And basic fields are great for free text answers, numbers, dates and times. Choice fields are primarily used for inline options such as yes, no or pass, fail type responses and selections are drop downs which we can either provide a list of options or link into lists to be able to centralize data within the system and they also provide a lot of other functionality but we'll cover that in a separate video. Moving on to the media fields, the most common fields here are the photos and e-signatures and we can also do barcode scanning. In the advanced section, we have things like repeatable field groups, which you may have heard of before as subforms, calculations which support in-app mathematical equations, or even JavaScript that allow you to custom code when the form submitted. So let's get started by adding some fields into the new form. You can do this one of two ways, either by left clicking on the field that you want to add, and that will automatically add it to the bottom of the form for you. Or down the line, once we've got some more fields in here, we'll be able to drag and drop this field into the required position into the form. Here, I'm now going to click on the short answer field and you can now see this is being added into the layout section and the edit field options are shown. Firstly, we need to give the field a caption. This is what's going to be shown within the app. You'll notice as we go through and add more fields, every single field type has its own set of configuration options. So we can really tweak the field to work exactly how you need it. One of the most common settings that you'll use is the required field. By setting this to yes, the field is now mandatory. When we click save, you can easily identify all of those required fields, which are marked with an asterisk here on the right hand side. Skipping ahead a little bit, and once you've got a few fields in your form, if you ever need to reposition any of those fields, you can easily move them by picking up the handle on the right hand side and dragging them up and down into position. A useful feature you might find on longer forms is to duplicate the field once it's been set up. This is great for forms such as checklists with similar yes, no or pass fail type fields like I mentioned earlier, which might also have a required setting and visibility rules that you don't want to repeat for every single field. It often saves time just to duplicate those fields by opening them and clicking duplicate. Here on this pop-up you can provide the field caption for every single copy that you need. So if let's say you have a list of questions that you want to ask, Simply pop those into each of the lines and click duplicate. You'll now see that the form builder has taken a copy of that field and updated the captions for each of those fields. Lastly, just a little tip once you're in the swing of things, by right clicking on any of the fields, it will open a context menu with quick actions. This is really helpful for things like deleting or duplicating fields, which really saves time instead of clicking into each of those fields to perform the necessary actions. So now that we've got a form up and running, let's go through some of the common settings on the form before we publish it out to the users. As there are quite a few granular options here, we won't cover them all off in detail, but as you click through each section, you'll notice the fields have this small question mark with an explanatory tooltip if you hover over them. This is really useful if you ever need any quick help as you're going through and building a form. In this form though, we want to set a title field. This will be used to highlight the key fields within the form that are shown on the mobile app completed forms, and also within the search results that you'll see on the reports page. GPS tracking is going to capture the user's location when the form starts as part of the audit trail. And as the number of forms starts to increase on your account, the form category is useful for grouping those forms into folders. Simply type in the category name that you want to use for this form or select it from the dropdown if you've already got some categories set up. 
Under the web form settings, a very useful feature is the share via email option. This enables the share icon within the form that allows the user to send a link via email to an external user, to view and complete, and then return the form to the sender. We'll also cover that process off in detail in another video. Once we've updated all of our settings, click Save Changes at the bottom of the form. Now the last step is to publish that form out to the users. When any changes are made on the form, they're saved to the portal until you're ready to send them out to the users without affecting anyone that's already using the form. Whenever you see the Publish Changes button, this means that there are changes that are waiting to be published. Simply click on the button to push those changes out. Published changes will be sent out to the device in real time if it's online, otherwise it will sync immediately once the user opens the app. Now that we've covered the basics of the form setup, jump in and try some of the other field types to design your perfect form. Check out some of our other videos where we're going to be taking a deep dive into the more complex field setups, building visibility rules and logic into forms, and then moving over to workflows where we can send reports and look at exception reporting to maximize the efficiency of our forms.